going to create an arrangement for a woodwind quartet by importing a Bach chorale as a music XML file. We're going to start with the setup wizard, just create the separate score that we're going to need um, to um, use that will um, copy the music from the XML file to it. And so I'll give it a name of tutorial 3 and add our composer, which is Bach, of course, not back Bach. Okay, and then we'll continue. Okay, let's go ahead and arrange this for um, woodwinds. So I need a flute, an oboe, B clarinet, flat clarinet, and a bassoon. And we'll add that and we'll continue. Okay, I know this happens to be in D minor, so okay. we'll need a pickup measure. And we need, oh, uh, I think it's about 16 measures, but let's make sure we have just a few extras just in case. So um, let's make it 18. Okay, and then we'll click done. All right, so here we have our score template. It's, it's still missing a few things, and uh, later on we'll talk about how to create templates, which will help you. Um, all right, so now our next step is to import the music XML file, and we go here and select open. And... Uh, Let's see, and I have it here. MuseScore does not seem to remember where I was the last time I was here. Um, so I have to go searching for those files each time. So we'll go here. All right, so here's my file. It's imported. Now, you'd think that maybe we could just use this. Uh, but you'll notice it's soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And so we'd have to change the instruments. And my experience in most notation programs is that editing um, files like this is actually more difficult than it is to just go ahead and do the copy and paste into your own file. Now, I'm not sure that that's necessarily true here because I've noticed I don't have brackets. Um, you know, I don't have the bar lines through the score. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting. We'll have to decide how we want to work with that. All right, so let's go ahead and copy our music. Select Command A will select all. Command C will copy it. And we'll click here on the first measure. If we can, I hope. And paste it in. Okay, so now it's done a couple of odd things. One, it's uh, kind of put things on two measures, and I'm not exactly, or two pages, and I don't know exactly why it chose to do that, because there's clearly plenty of room for it. Uh, let's get rid of our extra measures. We don't need those. See if that'll do anything. Nope, still there. So I think what we have to do is we have to go into the edit the general style and work with the page, and we're going to have to decrease the lower and upper margins here of the uh, music and see when it finally decides to go. Getting closer. Ah, there we go. Okay, so uh, exact, not exactly sure why that chose to do that that way, but that's what it did. Um, I bet there's a, I bet there's a simpler way, but hopefully somebody will tell me that later. Okay, so here we have our music, and uh, and it's set for flute. Now you'll notice that there's some things wrong here. Look at the stems and these things, and so, um, and that must have to do with the way it was entered into the music um, XML. Uh, file. And so we may have to fix that a little bit later on too. But uh, actually the first thing that I don't like is I don't like the range of the flute. If you'll notice the flute is really fairly low here. So let's go ahead and transpose this. Now um, before we've tried the transpose on individual small selections and we've had trouble with it. But if you select all and go to the transpose um, oops, over here and then tell it to transpose by key um, I'm going to transpose it up to G minor, okay, and tell it to transpose the key signatures. I believe it will do all of that for us. Yes, okay, so we now have all of our all the correct key signatures. Note this is a transposing score, so the B flat clarinet is in C. But we still have these issues with the, with the notes, okay, so we'll have to come back to that later. Um, but I know that I'm going to delete some of these measures, so before I do any of any more editing, I think I should go ahead and figure out where the repeat is. Um, we can start out and we can just play it. Ah, so we just hear it. We're hearing it start over again right here. Okay, so I'm going to select that measure, and then let's figure out. This is going to be a four-bar phrase, so I need to delete everything except the last measure of the phrase, because I'm going to do the first and second ending type of repeat. Okay, so that's 
I need to delete three bars, and so I missed it there. There we go. And so we'll just go up and delete these measures. Okay, while we're at it, let's go ahead and add in the repeats. Okay, so I'll need a forward repeat on the first measure, and then I will need a return repeat on the fourth measure, and then endings are added by lines. So we'll, oops, and then so you have to, that was interesting. Okay, so we have to move things around just a little bit to get them in there. Okay, and so there's our first and second endings. Okay, and so what's nice is that this, uh, oops, here, let's take us up here, back to, the, and you'll notice that it does play the, ref, the endings back. And so now our biggest problem here is that um, the stems are all going in unusual directions. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why it got that information from the XML, but we're going to have to go in and change it. And really, the only way I figured out how to do this is more or less manually. There is no global um, command that works that gets it so that they change in the correct direction. And uh, it would be really nice if they add that into version 2.0. But uh, we'll have to do this manually, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of that, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. So I've, I've adjusted the stem directions on all of the instruments except for the bassoon, and the reason I didn't do the bassoon is I realized that when I looked at it, I think it's actually kind of high, and I'd like, I'm going to take it down an octave. It's one of the nice things about four-part writing is, is that the bass part can go... Uh, can be an octave low, and it's okay if you have kind of a 3 plus 1 thing. So let's go ahead and just transpose that down an octave. Okay, I'm not transposing key signatures or anything else. Okay, so just down one perfect octave. And once again, my stems then end up being kind of messed up. Let's, um, okay, and there's also one other little idiosyncrasy with these stems. Um, I found that, for example, let's say I wanted to change all of all of these, well, let's see, no, let's start from here um, to here. I want all of those stems to go up. Now, if I click that, you'll notice that the group of eighth notes does not go up, and I have to click just the first eighth note to get it to work. And so next we'll go ahead and add in articulations, dynamics, phrasing, and then put some finishing touches on the score.